Hey everybody, this is Dr. Retzik, and this is our first video. So what I'm doing is I'm sitting at home and I've got the iPad hooked up to my MacBook and I'm going to try to talk over writing on the iPad and give you a little sense of what section 12.6 is all about. So here we go. This is roughly section 12.6. You remember in Calc 3 we actually skipped this. We skipped this. Um, and we're coming back to it now because it kind of talks about a lot of shapes that we're likely to encounter here in Calc 4. Remember, Calc 4 is entirely about taking what we know about Calc and turning it into new results in higher dimensions. Okay, so here we go. So 12.6 is, uh, it's about surfaces. So we're talking about surfaces here. And uh, you remember already that we encountered spheres. So a sphere looks like a circle as far as it's, um, algebraic description. It's just there's one more letter. So maybe this sphere is x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared plus z minus 3 squared all equals 9. So that's a sphere centered at 1, 2, 3 of radius 3. Great. And remember, it's the surface of the sphere, not the insides. This isn't a solid ball. Okay, fine. All right. Uh, I think we also encountered the taco shell, which looks something like this. This one, definitely not a sphere, and it kind of looks like X can be anything. Remember, the X axis is coming out like that. Y axis, Z axis. This one, uh, <clears throat> What is it? Well, it's a parabola as far as y and z are concerned, and x can be anything. So this one's got equation simply uh, z equals y squared. All right, fine. So we've seen these guys before. 12.6 includes a few others that are worth looking at. Now, we're not going to go over all of them. We just want to get a sense from this video of what we're looking at in 12.6 and sort of how to think about things so that even the ones we don't go over right now, you're able to go over on your own by modeling our thoughts in this discussion. Okay, so let's let's do an example here. All right, let's get a nice clean page. Uh, here's our first example. Example. Here's an equation involving x, y, and z. In this example, it's z equals x squared plus y squared. So we're looking for all the points in space, every conceivable x comma y comma z that satisfy this equation. So let's think about this for a second. Certainly z can't be negative. That's not happening because it's a sum of two squares. Okay, so whatever shape this is, it's all above the xy plane. Now, at any particular height, say at z equals c, some constant, then what we really have is c equals x squared plus y squared, and this is a circle centered at the origin of radius, what, root c? So as you change z values and you go from low heights, so small values of c, up to big values of C, you just get circles as far as X and Y are concerned. And so the graph of this thing looks something like this. It looks like a gumdrop. X coming out of the board, Y going to the right, Z pointing up. And at every spot at constant height, you just have a circle.
And the radius of the circle depends on the height at which you're looking at cross sections. This thing I believe is called a paraboloid. They all have a bunch of technical names. The names aren't super important. What's important is that we're able to analyze the equations and get some sense of what the shape looks like. So this one is circles on every horizontal cross section, vertex at zero, zero, zero. All right, let's get a fresh page and let's do one more example. Next example. This one's a classic. Okay, very similar to the last example. Except you see now, rather than y squared plus x squared, it's y squared minus x squared. All right. Well, this one's a little more complicated, right? Z could be negative. In fact, if y is zero and x is two, then z is negative four. So we gotta analyze this in a similar fashion, but it's just not quite as obvious. So let's just try it. Let's see what happens. At z equals c, so this would be a horizontal cross section. When z is equal to c, then you just get c equals y squared minus x squared. All right, now this is a relationship between x and y. If that were a plus sign in between, you guys would say again, oh, circle, but it's not, it's a minus sign. And so you gotta kinda go back in the pre-calc time machine and recognize this thing as a hyperbola. Uh, so if C is positive, this is a hyperbola opening in the Y direction. If C is negative, this is a hyperbola opening in the X direction. So above the XY plane, we got hyperbolas like this, opening in the Y direction. Below the XY plane, we got hyperbolas like this, opening in the X direction. It's still not totally clear what's going on though. So we're gonna analyze what's happening specifically when x is zero. And when x is zero, you see we got z equals y squared. Now, that is clearly a parabola as far as z and y are concerned. So this is flat in the zy plane, it's just a parabola with its vertex at the origin. Now, on the other hand, if we analyze at y equals zero, look what we get. z equals negative x squared. It's a parabola again. This time it's in the xz plane instead of the yz plane. But also it's opening downward. So this parabola is flat there in the xz plane, has its vertex at the origin, and opens downward. So what you're seeing right now is that this shape is actually something like this, where that orange parabola is opening downward with vertex at the origin, and the green parabola is opening upwards, vertex at the origin. If you wanna see the axes, maybe they look like this. X, Y, Z. This thing is called a hyperbolic paraboloid, I believe. They have lots of technical terms, but most people refer to this as the saddle. So that's basically it. What you gotta do from problem to problem in 12.6 is analyze the expression involving x, y, and z. Very often, the analysis involves setting one of the variables to zero or to some other constant. When z is constant, you're looking at horizontal cross sections. And piecing together how all of those cross sections are laminated together. I hope this gives you a decent start into considering 12.6. You guys go do 12.6, read it on your own, try the suggested problems, 
and then bring all questions for discussion into our first office hour. So I hope to see you then, and I'll talk to you soon.